Greetings, beautiful J2B research community. Two samples from a recent scientific study have big implications for J2B L283 ancient origins, and even the origin of our 12,700-year-old ancestor, J2B Z593. The study is called The Rise and Transformation of Bronze Age Pastoralists in the Caucasus, and I've linked it in the description. Two five to six thousand year old samples were found in relatively close proximity to one another in modern Stavropol Krai of Russia. These two individuals represent both known child lines of 12,700 year old J2B Z593 and were about 6,000 years distantly related to one another in 4000 BCE when the first one died. Further north, in the Zalatariovka Kurgan, was 4000 BCE sample Z01002. I think to avoid the confusion between zeros and O's, letter O and the numeral zero, which look identical in a lot of fonts, uh, I'm going to call it ZO1002. I think ZO 1002 was analyzed by both Flor Vesely and Pribislav to be a fully formed J2B L 283. Uh, a little further to the south, in the Marfa Kurgan, near the town of Kamsamalets, was sample KMM 023, which was found positive for J2B Y 167175. This is a huge development for this now rare line, which is also scattered around between Europe and the Middle East. Uh, their first ancient sample ever found might actually represent its approximate geographic origin. That's kind of the exciting thing about this. Uh, you see that, that there is some purple around the area of these two samples that I was just talking about. Uh, this is an un the underlying map is a map of the Kuma Manich Depression that I found on Wikipedia, made by user Maximilian Durbecker. Uh, just consider the the sites, the locations that I have marked. Consider that to be approximate location because it was difficult for me to um, orient this map with the Google Maps of this of this city names. Uh, but you can. But what's important is these lines that were about 6,000 years distantly related when uh, the oldest of the two samples died, they were not found far from each other at all. And they are the oldest samples of the two only lines of J2B Z593 so far found. So uh, I, think if, I think that the implication is there's, a, there's strong evidence that that uh, J2B Z593, which lived uh, 12,700 years ago, may have been living in that same approximate area. And if he wasn't living in that same area, then maybe he was living somewhere else. But for whatever reason, these two um, samples, ancestors, both migrated to the same place. Um, uh, we can now take a take a step back and look at what was going on at the Earth in the Earth at that time. The most recent common ancestor of J Z five ninety three lived during the time of the Younger Dryas. The Younger Dryas was a period in Earth's geologic history. This is from the Wikipedia article that occurred circa 12,900 to 11,700 years before present. It is primarily known for the sudden or abrupt cooling in the Northern Hemisphere when the North Atlantic Ocean cooled and annual air temperatures decreased by about three Celsius over North America, two to six Celsius in Europe, and up to 10 Celsius in Greenland in a few decades. Um, the period ended as rapidly as it began. Oh, at the same time, Southern Hemisphere experienced warming. That's kind of interesting. Uh, this period ended as rapidly as it began with dramatic warming over about 50 years, which transitioned the Earth from the glacial Pleistocene epoch into the current Holocene. Uh, other interesting thing, in the Northern Hemisphere, temperature change was highly seasonal with much colder winters, cooler springs, yet no change or even slight warming during the summer. S substantial changes in precipitation also took place 
with cooler areas experiencing substantially lower rainfall, while for warmer areas receive more of it. In the northern hemisphere, the length of the growing season declined. Land ice cover experienced little net change. Um, okay, so I'm I'm not an expert in in the climate of the ancient world. Um, so obviously I'm not if I have to resort to a Wikipedia article to give you information about this. But uh, uh, so when I've discussed some of the ancient t uh, 10,000 year old samples uh, in uh, found in the Cotias Clodea cave in Imereti, Georgia, I've discussed this with uh, Bessarion Gugushvili, who's interested in uh, genetic genealogy and ancient origins of peoples of the Caucasus. Uh, uh, he's he's pointed out to me that uh, it, one of the theories that the scientists have is that every is that uh, human beings all uh, vacated. They call it a hiatus when nobody is living in a certain area anymore. It's possible that um, during the Younger Dryas there was a hiatus in the northeastern Anatolia and the Caucasus. So I think that there's two uh, theories we can look at regarding the geographic origin of the most recent common ancestor for J2B Z 593. Uh, he could have been living around the Kumamanich Depression, which is north of the Greater Caucasus Range. Um, uh, but it's possible that the ancestor was actually living in what is now modern Georgia, uh, but that um, these guys who survived uh, had migrated north uh, out of the Greater Caucasus and, and into the Manich, Kuma Manich Depression. Uh, another s something that uh, supports uh, the theory that the that the deeper ancient origin was south of the greater Caucasus range uh, and in modern Georgia would be the that there that there was a 10,000 year old or sorry 9,700 year old ancient sample Neo 281 from Cotias Clade that that was uh, an ancient paraclade of J2B uh, so such old samples of J2B have not been found north of the uh, Greater Caucasus Range so far. Uh, I also think that um, we have to take into account J2B Z2432 when we're um, when we're looking at these ancient samples. Now this is uh, a line that's also very distantly related to these two um, bronze and copper age samples that were found in the North Caucasus. Uh, it's it's the brother of J2B L283, and it's 9,800 years distantly related. Um, this line was not found in ancient samples in the North Caucasus, and uh, we know that it that some of the branches of J2B Z2432 uh, must have taken part in a migration going from approximately Iran to further east. Uh, bringing in agriculture uh, about 7,700 years ago is, is this line J2BZ2449, which uh, then has many, many branching points uh, about that time that are only found or predominantly found in, um, in South Asia, India, and Pakistan. So uh, what's more likely that the ancestor of this line, which appears to have, it was doing very well when agriculture was being introduced to South Asia. Where would such agriculturists, agriculturalists have come from? Is it more likely that they, that they came from the North Caucasus? Uh, or is it more likely that, that this ancient ancestry, uh, the ancient ancestor of this line, was live J2BZ593 was uh, south of the Greater Caucasus Range, and this particular line is one that was living more in the area of modern Iran. Uh, I, I, I again, I'm not a climate expert, 
so I don't know where it was possible for you to survive during the Younger Dryas in this approximate area. Okay, now I'm going to switch gears to the implications of uh, the relationship between J2B L283 and the, and the Yamnaya uh, that we gained from this uh, sample from Zalatarevka. Zalatarevka, sorry. Uh, so from, from this study, Genetic Origin of Indo-Europeans, Lazaridis et Alii 2024, uh, the Yamnaya are best modeled from two groups, both of which had Caucasus hunter-gatherer. Uh, they're modeled as 74% Serednisti, Nisti, uh, that's a Ukrainian population, and 26% Remonoya, which was a North Caucasus population. The both constituent groups themselves had a Caucasus component, with that of Remontnoia being about half Caucasus derived. The Remontnoia, or a related group, migrated west to mix with Serednisti Sti to form Yamnaya. The source population of the Caucasus component of Remontnoia could be a yet unsampled population from the North Caucasus. So now what we what we see is if I have the right location for Remont Noya, if it's in the one if it's the one in Rostov Oblast, then it's 164 kilometers from Remont Noya to Zolotaryovka. So now we have a, a J2B L283 found in an ancient population from almost the same place that is that was uh, postulated by the paper to be one of the constituent populations that formed the Yamnaya and, and, and gave them one of their Caucasus DNA components. So the, the, the older J2B L283 sample that is uh, from 4000 BCE from um, Zolotaryovka, this was uh, before the J2B L283 mixed uh, with and formed the Yamnaya mixed with the Sredni Sti in, in somewhere in Ukraine and formed the Yamnaya. This sample was living before that took place. Uh, and then later, after the formation of the Yamnaya, we have the ancient sample I-10206 uh, from Krihanaveche, Moldova. That's 2700 BCE. In this screenshot uh, from that Jake Marsis made, uh, he you can see these uh, these locations: the Krihanevice sample, Zolotaryovka, and uh, also the the Nalchik ancient J2BL 283, um, which is probably a remnant from that that J2BL 283 probably originated in the North Caucasus, somewhere between Zolotaryovka and uh, Nalchik. Um, you, he also shows it with these green flags the ethnic Armenians that are a basal line of J2BL283, uh, and there and so it's possible that they migrated to there from the J2BL283 homeland in the Caucasus in the North Caucasus, and they just survived all these subsequent migrations of peoples that came to Turkey, including, you know, Turks, for example, or Persians, or all the different peoples that, that uh, came into Turkey. The, the older study, Genetic Origin of the Indo-Europeans, Lazaridis, uh, provides a linguistic theory based on a genetic admixture model that the homeland of the Proto-Indo-Anatolian language speakers was the North Caucasus, Lower Volga, around 4,400 to 4,000 BCE. In this model, sometime between 4,400 and 4,000 BCE, two groups split off from the homeland, one to the west that ultimately resulted in the Proto-Indo-European spoken by the Yamnaya, and one to the south that resulted in the Anatolian language family, represented by Hittite and Luvian. So there's an interesting possibility that the, these Armenians from Anatolia uh, were are survivals of this 
Proto-Indo-Anatolian split uh, of uh, a migration that came from the North Caucasus and went into Anatolia, bringing the the Hittite language. So that's a really interesting possibility, I think. And by extension, it's really interesting if J2BL283 were actually the original Indo-European speakers, or at least uh, they were there were J2BL283 living in the population that was uh, presumed to have been the original speakers of Proto-Indo-Anatolian before this. Uh, it, there was before some of them went to the Yamnaya and brought some of those languages to the Yamnaya. I want to thank the other researchers uh, of J2BL283, uh, Flor Vesely and Jake Marsis, who are uh, helping keep me informed of some of the developments of the ancient samples and, and what's what we can learn from the papers. And we bounce ideas off of each other. And Flor has an ancient uh, J2BL283 map that's very useful. And uh, uh, Jake just started a Twitter channel called Sons of Yamnaya. So you can go check that out.